welcome. Um, if you're watching online, we're delighted that uh, you're watching online and, and are with us in this beautiful morning. And we're here to celebrate and we're, we're here, here to worship. And uh, we're, we're going to go to sing a couple of songs as, as usual. Um, and then we're delighted to have Darla with us. We're, uh, we're talking about our deacons outreach today and uh, such an important part of, of ministry here and so important today, even more than ever. So you're going to hear more about that. We're going to be pushing that agenda and, and hopefully us realizing what this is all about, what we're here for. Um, and today's theme is called United. And is that something that we, we can honestly say from the bottom of our hearts, that's what we are as a church, that we're united in the one mission to actually go and serve God. So we're going we're gonna, to gonna sing now, and just let's bow our heads and we'll pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, we just thank you that we can come here in this beautiful morning to worship you, that we have the freedom to do that. And Lord, we want to lift our praises to you. We want you to, to take us and to stretch us in ways that we, we think differently, that we hear your call, that we open our hearts and our minds to you this morning. So Lord, we invite you to be present with us, to be here, to stir our hearts. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to move. Amen. Let's stand on. Stand and lift up our hands for the joy.
great psalm that when it talks about just the whole earth being filled with the glory of God. And that's what we try to do as a church, isn't it? It's what we try to do in our lives, that we actually live out our lives that the glory of God can be seen. And then this next song is pretty repetitive, but it's repetitive because we need to really realize what's being said. It says, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And we all need the eyes of our hearts open so that we, we can see what, what's around us. We can be oblivious to so many things. And, and, and God wants us today to open our eyes, to open our hearts. And this is like a prayer when we sing it. We just keep repeating it to God that open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because we want to see you. Because when we see God and we see through the eyes of God, the world is a different place. And we see things that we normally don't see. So as, as we sing this, think of it as a prayer. As, as we, we worship God, we're, we're lifting our prayer to him in song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. One of the greatest joys that I feel we, we have is the opportunity to serve. The opportunity to serve others. And our deacons do that week by, by week and don't get enough praise for, for doing that. But this is a special time. This is a time when 
we want to make a difference. This is not a charity that we're talking about. This is about us coming together as a church to, to help others to have a better Christmas. And it's not because all the time they don't, they, they can't have a good Christmas. We just want to give them that boost. We want to wrap our arms around them. We want, want to say that they're loved, that they're thought of. And so we're delighted to have Darla with us because she's going to share some of the differences that this makes. We had Diana from Lincoln Churn at the early service, which is wonderful. And uh, Darla, over to you. So my understanding is that Diana did an absolutely amazing job. And so now I'm nervous <laughs> um, because she um, is really the heart and soul of making all of these pieces come together. Um, but I wanted to share with you from my heart this morning, and it's really interesting that today's message is about unity, because that's what I woke up with this morning, is that at Lincoln, we have this vision that we want to love our kids, and we want to love our families. And it's been really cool in the last, I don't know, six years to watch how this community has come around us and is helping us to love these kids and to love our families. And you are a very vital part of that. You have come alongside us. I could name a hundred ways that you have helped us. Um, but one of the big ways that you help us is through this Christmas um, offering and loving the families. Um, we were, Heidi and I were just talking about how we just work through Diana. Um, there are some things, as you know, things are different this year. Um, but one of the real blessings that's coming out of COVID is that we have probably a tighter relationship with our families than we've ever had before. Um, we meet together with them. We are in their homes, whether that be with Zoom or sometimes it's porch drops off, drop offs or any some just different ways that we're um, meeting with our families and we're learning more about what the struggles are that they're dealing with on a day to day basis. So with that happening, we know that we want to bring them hope. We believe in our situation that we are bringing them hope by bringing them education and that education is going to get them um, so that they can make good decisions. But there's other ways to bring hope and you bring hope to our families by showing them that people care about them, by showing them that they're valuable, by showing them that they are important and that you see them and that you care about what happens to them and their kids. And one way that you do that, if you think of your own family, when it's birthday time or Christmas time, how do we show our families that we love and care for them? We buy them gifts, or we give gifts, or we do some activity together that shows that we are a family and we're gonna take care of one another. So that's a big piece of how you guys have come along on our journey of bringing these kids hope, these families hope um, that people care for them and that you care for them. One of the things that we're moving forward on at our school in our, you may have heard the school redesign, is helping our kids and our families to know that they have a growth mindset. That even when things are tough, that they can be able to make it through this time and that they can make it through successfully. And with you being a part of this journey with us, you are helping us to help establish that for our families. That yeah, it's tough right now. It's tough for all of us. But together, we're gonna get through this, and we're gonna get through it on the other side, amazing. And so I just wanna challenge you that now as you're coming forward on this time of Christmas and possibly adopting families and choosing families that we would want to give just extra special love for, um, I wanna share one family um, that last year, um, one of the parents was actually in jail and um, we, she had come and shared with us um, what was going on. We knew that she was going to jail. We were pretty sure she was gonna be in jail over the holidays. And in that conversation was able to say, can we take care of your kids for you? And um, was able to work with the caretaker at that time while mom was in jail to love these kids. And you were a part of that, of giving them gifts for Christmas um, while their parent was in jail. Let me tell you the other side of that. Mom going to jail, she's now clean. She's sober and clean, and I believe today is 330. 
Um, she has a little app on her phone and every once in a while takes a screenshot and sends it to me. Um, so she's doing in recovery, her kids, her, the behavior, it's unbelievable the change in behavior for these kids. These kids are learning, these kids are respectful, where at times before they weren't necessarily that way. I will also tell you that Mom Howe has a job and she is working that job on a consistent and daily basis. So she has absolutely turned her life around and you were a part of that journey. You were a part of that because you loved her kids at a time when she could not physically love her kids. And I wanna thank you for that and for the change that you're making in this family. And that's just one story. We've got about 140 other stories <laughs> that we could tell and could share with you. Um, but wanted you to just, just kinda wanna lay that out there. If God is saying to you, how can we join in this and what difference does it make? Um, I'll tell you what makes a big difference because all of these little pieces together make a huge story for our family. So thank you for that. I think that's the challenge that we, we, we had and we want to set before you. Before you leave today, please don't leave without taking one of these forms from Heidi. Heidi will be at the back. Maybe somebody else will help her on another door. Um, but please, please take one of these. We're, we're really going to challenge church. We want to challenge. We, we, we reached 28 families that we were able to help last year. There is more families in need. And yes, Times are difficult, but we can come together and we can make a difference. So our challenge is to beat last year's offering so that we can help more families. All your money, all that you give, your time even for shopping, goes to help individual families, just like you've heard from, from, from Darla and from the other schools that we're going to be working with here as well. This is a great need. So I want to ch this church is always stood up when a challenge has been there. So we want to challenge you to give generously. To give so that we can give. This is not giving so that we can put it in a bank account and leave it there. This is so that we can pour out love to so many families who just need that little arm around them, that pat on the back, that saying, here we're with you in this. We're with you. So please take one of these. Fill them out. If you're listening uh, or watching on, online, here's what I want you to do. We can do this here as well. You can go onto the church website at fpchutch.org. There's a little donate button that you'll find that if you hit that donate button, just like, like you do with Amazon or anywhere else, you can set up a little account and, and you can donate online. I really urge you to give um, we don't do this very often. I think this is the first time I've ever made an appeal like this. So I want you to donate online. I want you to go online and donate. You can, there's a little box there that you can actually write outreach offering. 
and your money will go to make a difference. Whether you belong to this church or not, if you're listening in, help us to make a difference. And we really would, would appreciate that. Today's theme is about being united. Being united in Christ. It's an exciting thing. It's a thing that usually church struggles with. Because there are so many divisions in church. When we're supposed to be united in serving God. I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. I appeal to you brothers and sisters. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. One more verse from Philippians 2 and verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So let me ask you something this morning. Have you ever met someone? I want to, sh I want to show of hands today. Because usually we're very, you know. So this is, this is our exercise for today, all right? This is aerobics with Keith. I'm going to put a video out there some, sometime or a DVD. So, all right, hands up if this has ever happened. Have you ever met someone who disagreed with you? Really? Of course we have. The thing is, we, we know that although they disagreed with us, we were right. Isn't that right? That, that's our attitude. You can disagree with me because I know I'm right. And that's where divisions come in. It's funny we always think we know best. It just seems to be in our makeup as a human being. But today's reading challenges to think very differently and to be very different. It's a challenge for us. We are to agree with each other. Really? Really? God, you know, no way. How, how can we all agree? We're all so different. We have to agree with each other. That's what we're told to do, to be united in all ways, no divisions. And if that First Corinthians uh, verse that we read seems impossible for us to do, Philippians gives us the formula to make it work. Because it says in your relationship with other, other, one another, have the mindset of Christ Jesus. That's why when we sang that song, about opening the eyes of our hearts, Lord. That's so that we can have the mindset of, of Jesus. Because when we have the mindset of Jesus, everything changes. The me goes away. And Jesus stands directing and nudging and opening our eyes to what's around. That's how it works. Because, let's be honest, we're never going to agree on everything. I'm sure if I said to you, does your family agree with every decision that's going to be made in the family? No. But you're still family. And we as a church can have, not fallings out as such, but we, we can know that things are different, and it's okay to be different. It's okay for that to happen. We don't have to fall out with each other. We don't have to leave the church. We don't have to never speak to someone because they don't agree with what we like. This might seem like an enormous task for us to have to, to, to achieve. It's like climbing a big mountain. I can't really say that in Kansas because we haven't got any big mountains in Kansas. Think of Colorado, think of the Rockies. Think of having to climb to the summit and you think, and you, you're standing at the bottom and you look and you go, I don't think I'm ever going to make that. But when you set out on that journey and when you finally reach the summit, it's worth it because the views are spectacular. You've achieved something. It's the same 
with us in church. We need to make our way to the summit. We need to make our ways with eyes of Jesus so that we can see what's actually out there in front of us. When we have the mindset of Christ and the view that Christ has of his world, everything is possible. Everything is possible when we see through the eyes of Jesus. And this is a challenge that's facing us today in November. First of November, who can believe it? First of November, so many days is up to Christmas, not too long. The Christmas tree will be coming out, the decorations will be coming out. Love this time of the year. For others, it'll not be so beautiful, it'll not be so good. And our challenge today is for us to become united so that we can make a difference. Unity among God's people. That's what's needed. Why do we need this unity? Well, when there's unity and love in the church, it will attract others like a magnet to God. When a church really starts to love, really offers each other to others, things start to happen. And we're starting to see that happen day by day here at First Presbyterian. You see, as a loving church, we need to continue to reach out. And when we reach out, we're doing it because we love the way Jesus loves. We're, if we're reaching out out of duty, that's not what it's about. It all needs to be earthed in love. And the love that Jesus had for us and the love that Jesus places in our heart for others. We are called to reach out. You know, growth happens, and, and I talked last week a bit about how we're thriving as a church. People will shake their heads and say, how can you thrive as a church when not everybody can be together? But we're finding a unity of people who realize what's happening, that God is working. So whether people are listening on, on the radio or watching online, there is a unity in the fact that we are here for a purpose. And the purpose happens beyond this building. It's exciting to see what God is doing. And we, we need to be here to build each other up. We, we need to have that pat on the back for someone. An encouraging word. It's so important for everyone, whether you're going through real hard times or just going through life. To find someone who encourages us is the sort of person you want to be around, isn't that right? When someone's enthusiastic about something, you want to be about them because it's infectious. Instead of ice, having to isolate from them, we want to be around them. We want to isolate from people at the minute because of, of this virus. It's still so important that we do that. And we take this seriously. But when we find people who encourage us, we, we want to get alongside them. It does us good. That's what we're supposed to be. When life is tough, there isn't enough encouragement in this, this world. And if that's the case in the world, we don't need it to be in church. We need to be encouragers. We need to be a whole band or army of people who are going out in our community and encouraging people. The question is, could you be someone like that? Because it makes a difference. And of course you can. Just look around this, this church or think of the, all the different people that, that you know, all the different ages. And there are so many different personalities and points of view. But there's still unity because we're united in Christ. Jesus is our united front, really. The person that we depend on. But the value of a loving church is that while you may disagree with others, you never forget 
that Jesus died for them too. That's how important they are to God. Sometimes that's what we have to remember. We think we are important. Everyone's important. Everyone is important. We need to treat everyone the way God sees them as his children, as our brothers and sisters. And if someone in our family is hurting, we will reach out and help. This is what God wants us to do. Unity doesn't mean we have to like the same styles of worship or songs or hymns. But we need to speak the same message. We need to speak the same message. We read from the same Bible. We preach about the same things. Because there's unity in the word of God. We need to hold true to biblical doctrine. Like the virgin birth, his deity, his death, his burial and resurrection, his ascension and his coming again. Those are the key factors of who we are as Christians. We need to remember that each one of us are sinners. It's a word we don't like to use because it makes us seem imperfect and we are imperfect. We are saved by grace and we are kept by grace. Did you know we had a job description as Christians? Did Have you ever looked at the job description? When when we go for an interview, we we will want to see the job description. We will want to see what actually we're supposed to do. It's the same with us being being a Christian and following God. There's a a job description. And, And part of that job description is to build others up, not to pull them down. We live in a society that loves to put people on a pedestal so that you can knock them off it, pull them down. Someone gets success, there's a clamor to try and find something to make them not look as successful. That's the world that we live in. The church has to be different. We're supposed to build people up, and if we aren't, then we aren't fulfilling our job description. It's our responsibility. Jesus didn't come to earth to please himself. He didn't decide he needed a vacation so he'd come to earth for an easy time. He came because he knew that this was the plan from his father. It was a salvation and a redemption plan that he had to go go through with. It's tough. But if you and I want to be like Jesus, then we will need to put the needs of others ahead of our own and be a servant be a servant that's what this Christmas outreach is all about us serving others I've said it time and time again I'm going to say it again it is the most wonderful thing that I get to do and that Jennifer and I get to do in the whole year I believe when you actually connect with someone and you find out how you can help and when you deliver that to them the joy and the excitement on their face, wow, it's worth a million dollars, it really is. And why is it? Because you realize that you're bringing a bit of the love of Jesus into that that, that home. You're telling someone that you care for them. This is what our school partnerships are all, all about. It's not about once a year doing something for school, but it's being there constantly, 24 seven if needed. To know that you're only a phone call away. To know that, you know, at times we'll just go and deliver boxes of donuts, as we did the other week, to the three schools around us here for all the staff. Why? Because we just want them to know that we're encouraging them, we're there for them. It's amazing what a donut can do to somebody's day. The smile on faces when a donut box walks in. Makes me smile too. As long as it's filled with Bavarian cream. So I'm just giving you a little, all right? If anybody's thinking, wonder what Keith like a dough donut. Get me a chocolate filled Bavarian cream. I'll be there. But please coordinate it on different days. I don't want you all bringing me it in one day. I can only do one a day, all right? So Bavarian cream, chocolate, donut, mix. Oh. John will even eat one too, so he will. 
We can laugh at things. You know, we, we, we can say these things. It's only a donut. For goodness sake, it's only a donut cake. But for, because someone else thinks about you, it makes an awful difference to, to, to your day. You see, when we're united together, we think of others before ourselves. We're constantly thinking, what can I do to help someone else? This means putting others before self. Now, that can come as a shock horror to many pe people. That it's not about me. Really? It's not about me? What a disappointment. I thought the world revolved around me. And that's the attitude so many of us have. But remember that Jesus accepted you and me unconditionally. Non-judgmental. He took us at our worst and he gave us hope. And that's what we have to do. We have to accept others as Christ accepts them. For that mother that was in jail, doesn't matter why she was there. Doesn't matter why it happened. But it must have looked as if there was no hope. And the little thing of just looking after kids and others coming alongside her and helping her let, let's put this in con context. Our gifts didn't get her to where she is today. But it helped. It encouraged. It showed that there was hope because people out there cared for her family. That's what church is supposed to be about. Our churches would be full, I believe, if we had the heart of Christ and saw people as they were and didn't judge. We accepted them the way Christ accepted us. Jesus didn't pick us because we were so wonderful already. He didn't pick us because we, we put in a great performance. He chose us based on his love for us. Always heard that thing, don't judge a book by its cover. It's very easy for us to look at someone and make a judgment. God never does that. Jesus never does that. He looks beyond. He looks into the heart and into the life and he says, there's my child. So what kind of church do you want to be part of? One with Jesus at the center of it. One with, with people whose eyes are open that we see through the eyes of Jesus. One that shows unity and shows a servant heart. One that's not perfect, but healthy. My friends, if you're looking for a perfect church, switch off now because you're never gonna find one. But you can find a healthy church that is striving to get healthier and to get better. One that is growing day by day in joy and peace and hope and power. And that's what I believe is happening here. We're thriving because Jesus is at work. We've done a little video that will come up in the next few days, hopefully. Because we're, we're, we're talking this message of thriving in the midst of a time when nobody uses that word. You know, you say to people, how are you going? How, how's things going for you during this whole weird eight months? Usually the word that comes to mind is, no, I'm thriving, it's great. But we're thriving because Jesus is providing opportunities for us here. We're working with brothers and sisters in Christ to do the will of God. For me, the unity that I've seen among the pastors here in Hutchison, we've been meeting every Tuesday for the last eight months to pray together on Zoom, to talk about things, to let our frustrations go, to talk about what's happening. It's amazing. Never happened before in my, my, my time. The whole diverse range of God's people coming together and denominations aren't thought of, only Jesus. It's really refreshing. That's unity. That's what Christ wants to see. Unity is at the, is at the center of everything that we should be. 
Remember, Jesus and his Father are one. Matthew 18, 20 tells us as well that where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Jesus is here in the midst of us this morning, challenging us to be united in his call to go and to make a difference. Unity with the Father, unity with each other, equals blessing. C.S. Lewis said this, true friends face in the same direction toward common projects, interests, and goals. True friends look in the same direction. A true church looks in the one direction. And that one direction is up. Looking at God, asking him what's next. Bringing unity and love to a broken world. That's what we're called to do. The challenge is, are we up for the challenge? Yes, we are. Because God will push us and God will walk alongside us and God will say, the more that you give, the more I can bless. So let's give. Let's give all that we have of ourselves so that others can find Jesus, can bring hope. And let's do it in unity. Let's do it because we're united with Jesus, with God, and that he is our driving force. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that you took me and you took each one of us when we, we were nothing, when we were messed up, sinners. And you saw more in us than anyone could ever see because you created us and you love us. Today, Lord, we ask for unity in your church. We ask for unity here in First Presbyterian. We meet in three different worship services, but we, we meet under the one message. A message that comes from you. We have different styles and we have different likes, but we have the one Jesus Christ. So Lord, help us to live our lives to bring glory to you. Help us to fight those voices that tell us you can't make a difference when God says you will make a difference. What you'll give What's that going to do? God says, what you will give, I will multiply. So Lord, today let us come before you and let us believe that you are greater than all things. And Lord, stir our hearts to be servants who want to put others before ourselves. And let us make this time of the year one of the most exciting times for families as they find that there are others who they don't even know who cares for them. Amen. You know, I think that's one of the, one of the great things, you know, that if you think about it, if you get something from someone who doesn't even know you, it really blesses you so, so much. You just get blown, blown away by the fact that someone actually cared. And it wasn't because of getting to know us, just because they cared. So that's what we want to do and to be. We're going to sing our final song. And please, as I say, Heidi, you know, we'll be at the back. We want to talk to her. Uh, we need shoppers as well. Uh, there's a little form there you can fill in. You can leave it back. We're, we're having the offering next week. And we'll take your, your money for whenever you want to give it to us. And we're not trying to put pressure on you. We just say give as you can give. But give from hearts that are full of Jesus. All right? Because that makes it generous.
because he has been generous to me. Love this last song, it's called You Say. Lord, we just ask that you send us out from here in the power of your Holy Spirit to live, to make a difference, to change lives, because that's what you do and that's what you ask us to help. So Lord, send us now. Amen. Have a great week.